Dear Net Aspirants, welcome to my video lecture for education uh, subject unit 2. What is unit 2? That is uh, history, politics and economics of education. We will briefly uh, discuss on various commissions and then the important questions etc. And uh, what is the uh, you know content of this particular unit history politics and economics of education that is unit 2 in education in the first part we are talking about committees and commissions contribution to teacher education secondary education commission 1953 Kotari education commission uh, 1964-66 uh, then uh, national policy on education 1986-1992 National Commission on Teachers 1999, National Curriculum Framework 2005, National Knowledge Commission 2007, Yaspal Committee Report 2009, National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education 2009, Justice Verma Committee Report 2000. There are so many committees and we have to get the important insight into each commission. What is the theme of this particular commission like that we have to see. In part B, we are going to discuss on the relationship between policies and education. What is the linkage between educational policy and national development? Determinants of educational policy and process of policy formulation. In that, we come across a certain uh, important uh, ideas like analysis of the existing situation, generation of policy options, evaluation of policy options, making the policy decision, planning of policy implementation, policy impact assessment, and subsequent policy cycles. We will be having some idea on all these aspects. This is part to be. In part to see, we are going to talk about the economics of education. Concept of economics of education, cost benefit analysis versus cost effective analysis in education, economic returns to higher education, signaling theory versus a human capital theory, concept of educational finance, educational finance at micro and macro levels, concept of budgeting, uh, all these things uh, come, uh, come under part C, namely the concept of economics of education. In part D, that is the relationship between politics and education. You know, that is a key topic. And there we are going to discuss on the perspectives of politics of education, liberal, conservative and critical. Uh, you know, different perspectives. Then approaches to understanding politics. Uh, behaviorism, theory of system analysis, and theory of rational choice. And finally, we are going to talk about education for political development and political socialization. So, all something new topics so far we were not carrying in the education paper, but uh, you know they have taken it from sociology and then political science, sociology. After all, education is the interdisciplinary subject. So, for any subject, uh, you know, topics will be there. We have to understand that. That way, all these topics have been given. Nothing new, nothing difficult also. So, if you go through you know, the ideas, the theories, the meaning, characters, etc., it is easy for us to understand all this. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, no difficulty at all in understanding all these topics. So let us follow. Uh, let us just, you know, we will we'll begin to discuss on each part. Committees and Commission's contribution to teacher education. First one, Secondary Education Commission, 1953. What are the insights, the important insights we are having towards Secondary Education Commission? It emphasizes the need for a well-trained, competent teaching workforce. In the, after independence, we were talking about it. Before that, all were made into clerks. So, uh, specialization was not there. So, for that reason, teachers should be specially given uh, some training and then they should be made competent. Uh, that was the cry of Secondary Education Commission in 1953. That suggested improvements in teacher training institutions. Even the teacher training institutions should have some quality. That is their idea, suggested improvements. Then they recommended in-service training for teachers to update their skills. So first time they started in-service training for teachers to upgrade the skills of the teachers. That is Secondary Education Commission, 1953. What are the educational implications? Uh, this uh, Secondary Education Commission strengthened the teacher education infrastructure. It highlighted the importance of continuous professional development for teachers. 
this uh, uh, secondary education commission led to the establishment of more teacher training colleges and programs so these are the key ideas in secondary education commission what are the key ideas in the kotari education commission 1964 66 what are the insights it advocated for a comprehensive education system including teacher education kotar uh, education commission suggested integrated courses for pre service teacher training integrated courses i mean different subjects also should be taught to the teachers you know that idea kotar education commission gave then it emphasized research in education and training methodologies so in 1964 they were focusing their attention on experts focus their attention on research in education and training methodologies so that is kotar education commission what are the educational implications of kotar education commission kotar education commission promoted a holistic approach to teacher education i mean teachers should be developing their uh, abilities uh, in all aspects all round the development of the teachers themselves then it led to the establishment of educational research institutions so because of this commission many uh, research institution came into existence then the kotar education commission encouraged the most scientific approach to teaching and learning it's not be just artistic it's simply you know talking anything and not that type of thing it should be more formal it should be more scientific uh, it was uh, having the focus so the kotar education commission encouraged the most scientific approach to teaching and learning then national policy on education 1986 1992 what are the important insights with regard to national policy on education national policy on education stressed the professional development of teachers very important i think uh, there was always a growth from uh, every commission no doubt about it Uh, further refinement further refinement like that so national policy on education talked about the professional development of teachers so uh, uh, this npe introduced the concept of district institutes of education and training tags uh, was created because of this commission national policy on education it focused on teacher education for both pre service and in service training not only in service training it gave uh, uh, not only pre service in service training also even after becoming teachers also the, the teachers should be put into the, some courses some, some refresher courses in service training should be given this they said then what are the educational implications uh, institu- institutionalized the, the institutional structure for teacher education at district levels Uh, they, they were created because of this commission it promoted lifelong learning and continuous professional development for teachers uh, it enhanced the quality of teacher education through new policies and programs all these new no, new ventures in teacher education programs because of national policy on education so it promoted lifelong learning continuous professional development uh, it talked about this one the national, national commission, commission on teachers 1999 there was another commission national, national commission, commission on teachers what are the important uh, uh, insights with regard to this commission it analyzed national commission on teachers analyzed the status and working conditions of teachers for the first time their salary their uh, you know the residential facilities and uh, their uh, status everything uh, national commission on teachers uh, 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 you know it talked about so it analyzed the status and working conditions of teachers it highlighted the need for a code of professional ethics for teachers teachers also uh, are supposed to follow a certain code of conduct certain rules and regulations so it uh, it uh, felt the need for a code of professional ethics for teachers national commission on teachers 1999 then it recommended reforms in teacher education curriculum a uh, lot of reports need to be done in teacher education curriculum itself so that is what uh, national commission on teachers were holding then what are the educational implications this uh, national commission on teachers led to the formulation of policies improving teachers work environment it emphasized the professionalization of teaching it ensured ethical standards and accountability in the teaching profession so this is about national commission on teachers the next one national curriculum framework 
What are the important insights with regard to national curriculum framework? It emphasized constructivist approaches to teaching and learning. In other words, a creative, a creative approach to teaching and learning. So, 2005. It recommended inclusive education practices. Yeah, that means uh, everyone should be accepted in you know, inclusive education practices. Then it stressed the need for reflective and critical thinking in teacher education. So, reflective and critical thinking it, pro it promoted in teacher education. This National Curriculum Framework 2005. What are the educational implications? It shifted the focus from work learning to understanding and critical thinking, a very important one. You know, not mere information giving, but uh, understanding and critical thinking it uh, focused. So, so education implication is, was that. It promoted inclusive education catering to diverse learning needs. So, National Curriculum Framework 2005, you know, it talked about inclusive education. Please don't forget, it promoted inclusive education catering to the diverse learner needs. It inspired curriculum reformers in teacher education programs. So, so that, that way. I mean, yeah. it became very became scientific, scientific form, form uh, uh, including, including every other school. Every other no separate no schools for, for, you know, you know uh, mentally uh, retarded mental children. Retarded children are, of course, there, there are mentally are retarded, retarded schools, schools for, for uh, uh, when the uh, degree is very high, no doubt about it. But in general, all should be accepted in general. So that is inclusive curriculum, inclusive institutions, in other words, inclusive education. The National, National Knowledge Commission 2007, 2007. what are what the insights? It identified the knowledge gaps in various sectors, sectors including education. education. There were there some, some you know, knowledge gaps it found. Uh, it recommended the reforms to improve the quality of higher education and teacher training. You know, what uh, you know, they are practicing in the B.A. colleges, they may not be really practicing in real situations. So all these things were uh, highlighted, National Knowledge Commission. So, so the knowledge gap was uh, reduced after that perhaps, you know, uh, much, much more, more importance was given to practical, practical aspects of teacher education. education. So it so recommended it reforms, reforms to improve, improve the quality of higher education and teacher training. Teacher training. It, highlighted it highlighted the importance, importance of technology, of technology in education. In education. This National Knowledge Commission, very important point is this one. National Knowledge Commission, for the first time it highlighted the importance of technology in education. Of course, in 1986, new education policy, it was talked about, yes, but at that time technology was not improved. But 2000 already internet and other technological facilities came, and because of that, National Knowledge Commission highlighted the importance of technology in education. What are the educational implications? It encouraged the use of ICT in teacher education. Very important point. This 2007 uh, National Knowledge Commission encouraged the use of ICT in teacher education, enhanced the knowledge base and skills of teachers. It promoted innovative practices in teacher training and education. Then there, uh, there is another committee called the Yashpal Committee Report. 2009. What are the important insights? It criticized the fragmentation of the education system. The education system was not integrated, it was fragmented in many aspects. Theory and practice were different, it was not one and the same, something like that. No way the practical aspects, uh, you know, contributed to the theory or theory contributed to the practice, all such things. It criticized the fragmentation of the education system. It recommended the integration of teacher education with the higher education. It emphasized the interdisciplinary approaches in teacher education. So this is a Yashpal Committee Report 2009. What are the educational implications? It led to structural reforms in teacher education. It promoted a more cohesive and integrated approach to teacher training. It encouraged the interdisciplinary research and uh, teaching practices. Very important one, this one. Interdisciplinary research and teaching practices. This is a committee report. See, all these things are now in new education policy 2020, they are uh, implementing all this. The Aspal committee, they were talking about interdisciplinary research. Today, we are talking about it in new education policy. You can take any subject and then blend it and then do the research, you know, that type of thing. Even you can study different, uh, uh, you know, branches. Uh, who is in science uh, subject may take anything in the art subjects. That type of interdisciplinary research approach has come into existence now through new education policy. So all these uh,
commissions and recommendations are uh, put forth in practice nowadays uh, through new commissions. That is what is happening now. The National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education 2009, a National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education, it provides a detailed framework for teacher education programs. It emphasizes the socio-cultural context of education. It advocated for experiential learning and reflective practice. So a very important one, this one, National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education 2009. Experiential learning it focused, right? Reflective practice in whatever the, the teachers did, no? So that is the idea given here. Very important one. Then socio-cultural context of education. So, so the education is given for, you know, the welfare of the society, you know, that was made clear through national curriculum framework for teacher education. What are the educational implications? Uh, standardized teacher education curriculum across the country. All over the country standardized the teacher education curriculum. I mean methods, uh, all creative methods were given to all the colleges like. Then it fostered a deeper understanding of the social cultural dimensions of teaching. It encouraged the development of reflective and effective teaching practices. So, so it's another important aspect. This uh, uh, National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education 2009 encouraged the development of reflective and effective teaching practices. Then Justice Verma Committee is 2012. What is the important aspect or insight with regard to this commission? It addressed the issues of regulatory failures in teacher education. Regulatory failures. You know, the teacher, no, teacher education, education, you know, sometimes, sometimes it was not a regulated well. Huh? That is the idea, idea of this of Justice Verma Committee. Uh, you know, uh, uh, very strict rules and regulations have to be formed according to the Justice Verma Committee report. That's what's happening in uh, every other state government. Nowadays, teachers are given jobs, but then uh, the inspection and other things are very strict nowadays, even in government schools. I mean, all such committees, uh, you know, are the cause for such kind of uh, uh, strict rules and regulations. Justice Verma Committee report addressed this regulatory failures in teacher education. It emphasized the quality and accountability of teacher education programs. What are the educational implications? It improved the regulated framework for teacher education. It ensured higher standards and quality assurance in teacher training institutions. And it promoted transparency and accountability in the teacher education sector. More and more refined, actually. Each commission refined education into uh, a further degree, perhaps. No, that, that way we can say. Now, uh, 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 as concluding uh, was what, what can we say? The various committees and commissions have played a crucial role in shaping teacher education in India by advocating for improvements in infrastructure, curriculum, professional development and regulatory frameworks. These reforms have aimed to ensure that teachers are well prepared, continually updated and held to high ethical and professional standards, ultimately enhancing the quality of education in the country. Now, now, some questions some we can ask with regard to this part A, secondary, secondary education commission. What, what could be the key question, key question very important very question with regard to secondary, secondary education commission? commission. What was one what of the major, major recommendations, major recommendations of, the of the secondary education commission regarding teacher education? Four alternatives are given. Introduction of compulsory teacher training is it true. Establishment of teacher training institute is it true. Extension of teacher education to two years. Yes, is it true? Recruitment of untrained teachers, is it true? What is the correct answer? Establishment of teacher training institutes, because at that time it was not many, after independence, you know, what British government have started, they were registered, but then a new uh, teacher education institution in modern, uh, with the modern facilities were not there. So, Secondary Education Commission's uh, focus was that, that is uh, expansion in a way, estab establishment of teacher training institutes. The Secondary Education Commission emphasized the establishment of teacher training institutes to improve the quality of education and ensure that teachers are adequately trained for secondary education. Then with regard to Kothari Education Commission, what question we can ask? Which of the following was a significant recommendation by the Kothari Education Commission for teacher education? 
Is it abolition of teacher training programs? Is it integration of teacher education with the universities? Or reduction in the duration of teacher education courses? Or the introduction of distance education for teachers? What is the correct answer? And what is the question? Which of the following was, a, was an important recommendation by the Qatar Education Commission for teacher education? That is integration of teacher education with the universities, not with the school system, with the universities, because it needed a you know, high quality, you know, quality of teaching. So it, it expected teachers to be of certain quality. So it should be uh, uh, linked with the university education. That is what they said. What is this? This is. This is uh, uh, Kotari Education Commission says integration, integration of teacher of education, education with the university is a must. The, the Kotari Education Commission recommended, recommended integrated teacher, teacher education, education with the universities to enhance the quality of teacher, 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 teacher preparation and provide a more comprehensive educational experience, quality educational experience. The national, national policy, policy on education, 1986, 1992, 1982, 1986 came, you know, in the parliament, 1992, uh, the practical aspects were discussed and then brought into implementation in 1992. So, according to the national policy of education, 1986, 1992, what was the major focus area for improving teacher education? Is it providing free teacher education or upgrading the content and process of teacher education? Limiting the entry into teacher, teacher education courses, abolishing pre service teacher training. Which should be the correct one? According to the national policy of education, what was a major focus area for improving teacher education? That is upgrading the content and the process of teacher education. So, so even the, the content, content itself has to be modern because uh, outdated modern. For, uh, for an example, psychology, educational psychology was not introduced before 1986 and that. And uh, when you uh, ha uh, when, when you are having an interview with uh, you know old people who have done uh, uh, teacher training and all, they will say only the sociology was given or some methods were given, history, sociology like that. You know, educational psychology, a scientific uh, subject was not given till 1985, we can say. Only at that time we started studying, after 1980 and all, because of this commission perhaps. So, upgrading the content and process of teacher education. Education. Technology came into existence only after 2000. Before that, we did not have, you know, this online type of uh, technology and all. Even the books were uh, written only for how to make uh, the instruction and aids. You know? Only those things were uh, existing. The electronic media and all did not come into existence till 2000. So that way, 1986, uh, this national education policy said, we need to upgrade the content and process of teacher education. So the national policy of education 1986-1992 focused on upgrading the content and process of teacher education to ensure that teachers are better prepared to meet the challenges of modern education. The National Commission on Teachers, 1999, what could be the one question that we can ask? What was the key recommendation of the National Commission on Teachers concerning teacher education according to National Commission on Teachers, 1999? Is it to reduce the number of teacher training institutions, increase the duration of teacher education courses to four years, regular in-service training for teachers, discontinuing refresher courses for teachers, which is the right one? So what was the key recommendation of this National Commission on Teachers, that is regular in-service training for teachers. 1999, National Commission on Teachers uh, proposed this idea or recommended this particular idea. That is regular in-service training for teachers. National Commission on Teachers recommended regular in-service training for teachers to keep them updated with the latest educational practices and developments. The National Curriculum Framework. What is the one question that you can ask with regard to National Curriculum Framework 2005 according to its important theme? The National, National Curriculum Framework, framework highlighted, highlighted the importance of which of the following in teacher education. There are four things given. Theoretical knowledge about practical skills, child-centered pedagogy, uh, traditional uh, teaching methods, minimizing the use of technology in education. That is child-centered pedagogy. 
that is national curriculum framework highlighted the importance of uh, the child centered pedagogy that is manavar maya katra then uh, the national curriculum framework emphasized the importance of child centered uh, learning in teacher education to ensure that teaching practices are focused on the needs and experiences of the child this is a very important one national curriculum framework completely for the student they are the customers for the teachers you know that way they spoke so whatever the teachers do it should be uh, satisfying the needs of the students you know to that extent it said so child centered education the, the national, national knowledge, knowledge commission. commission what was, was the one, one uh, uh, what, what was, was one of the recommendations of the national knowledge commission related to teacher education establishing more teacher training colleges focusing solely on urban education enhancing the quality of teacher education programs reducing the qualification requirements for teachers which is the right one national knowledge commission that is enhancing the quality of teacher education programs so how to explain this the national knowledge commission 2007 recommended enhancing the quality of teacher education program to produce better equipped teachers who can meet the demands of modern education then yashpal committee report yashpal committee report 2009 what was the question here what did the yashpal committee report stress on regarding teacher education is it elimination of in service training is it stronger emphasis on foundational knowledge is it reducing the focus on child psychology is it discontinuing inter disciplinary approaches what is the what is the recommendation given by yashpal committee report that is stronger emphasis on foundational knowledge adequate are stronger emphasis on foundational knowledge the yashpal committee report stress the importance of a strong foundation in content knowledge and pedagogical skills for teachers to enhance the overall quality of education in other words mastery in the content and the even inter disciplinary through inter disciplinary approach you know teachers should become the master of the subject by incorporating knowledge from various sources Know, that is what they stress the importance of a strong foundation in content knowledge and pedagogical skills means the teaching skills for teachers the national curriculum framework for teacher education 2009 what is the question here the national curriculum framework for teacher education proposed to which of the following changes shortening teacher education program emphasizing reflective practice and continuous professional development abolishing technology in teacher education or decreasing the intake the capacity of teacher training institute so uh, i mean what it they so, propose a national uh, curriculum I mean, framework for teacher education that is they emphasize the reflective practice and continuous professional development in other words ongoing learning they propose the national curriculum framework for teacher education the emphasizing reflective practice and continuous professional development so the national curriculum framework for teacher education proposed to emphasize reflective practice and continuous professional development to ensure that teachers remain effective and up to date in their teaching practices i mean fact they should be modern they should incorporate all the all the uh, modern ways of teaching in their the teaching no? that is the idea uh, the justice verma committee report what could be the one question that we can ask justice verma committee report, which recommendation did the justice, report, justice verma committee report make regarding uh, teacher education lowering the entry qualifications for teacher education and the nullaiv lowering the entry qualifications for teacher education and the nullaiv strengthening the regulatory framework for teacher education institutions reducing the duration of teacher education courses eliminating practical training from the curriculum so what is the main recommendation given by justice verma committee report that is strengthening the regulatory framework for teacher education institutions it should be run properly even now it is not happening we know that you know tamil nadu or all over india some other rule situation no tamil nadu you know teacher education programs are not done properly it is for the it is done for the sake of money most of the colleges are irregular we know that it is not a most of the colleges in fact we are just seeing no it is not a it's high we are the high it is just very dangerous situation no what the commission said proposed we are not doing so the strengthening the regulatory framework for 
teacher education so, institutions. The, the Justice Verma Committee report 2012 recommended strengthening the regulatory framework for teacher education institutions to ensure high standards and accountability in the preparation of teachers. Of course, uh, part A is over with some important questions. Now let us uh, discuss on the relationship between policies and education, linkage between education policy and national development, determinants of educational policy and process of policy formulation. In that we are going to talk about analysis of the existing situation, generation of policy options, evaluation of policy options, making the policy decision, planning of policy implementation, policy impact assessment and subsequent policy cycles. So what is the relationship between policies and education? So what is the guiding framework? It gives the guiding framework. Uh, policies provide a guiding, a guiding framework, framework for educational institutions, ensuring that educational activities are aligned with the national goals and societal needs. So that is the relationship between policy and the education. So ensuring that educational activities are aligned with the national goals and societal needs. So that is the relationship. Then resource are Allocation. Policies is the allocation of resources, including funding, infrastructure, and human resources, essential for the functioning of educational institutions. Then UKT and access. Educational policies aim to ensure UKT and access, addressing issues such as gender disparity, socio-economic barriers, and regional imbalances in education. எடுக்கிறேன் <laughs> a prosperous world. Yeah, that prosperous way it should be an investment. Be an so the accountability and so governance is another important aspect in the relationship, the relationship between the relationship between policy and education. Policy. What is the linkage between education and policy and national development? Here we, and here, here we are talking about human capital development. Educational policies contribute to the development of human capital, money the mula capital, by equipping individuals with the knowledge, skills and competencies necessary for economic growth. Then economic growth is another important aspect through the policy. Education policies that promote skills development and innovation directly contribute to economic and growth and competitiveness. Then social cohesion. Policies that emphasize that inclusive education help foster social cohesion, reducing inequalities and promoting social stability. So social cohesion is another important aspect. Then sustainable development. Educational policies are aligned with the sustainable development goals ensure that education systems contribute to environmental sustainability and responsible citizens. So sustainable Responsible then, so health and well-being, education policies that incorporate health, and well health education and awareness contribute to the overall well-being of the population. All these aspects will come in the policy of education. Next, determinants of education. பாலிசி <laughs> 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 
you know, it is not possible to spend for anything and everything. So somewhere or other, student you know, should come up in life and they should find jobs somewhere, employment rates should be high. So that is the one of the important determinants of the education policy, socio-economic factors, then political environment. Government ideology, political stability, and leadership commitment impact policy formulation and implementation. When the government comes with a particular ideology, it tries to impose that in the people, no doubt about it. So the political environment also is very important with regard to the relationship between policy and education. Then uh, cultural context, uh, you know, that also determines the educational policy. The cultural context, cultural values, values, traditions, and, and, societal norms, values, and societal norms, norms shape educational priorities and approaches. Then technological advancements. Technological developments will drive changes in educational delivery methods and curriculum content. Technology is also one of the important aspects and that, you know, that becomes the determinant of educational policy. I mean, without this technology advancement, today we cannot talk of education. So the policy has to be conducive to that. It should be appropriate for that type of growth in technology. That is the idea here. Then international influences. Global trends, international agreements, and educational benchmarks affect national policy decisions. International influence. You know, benchmark means what the standard, the quality. You know, uh, an IT person is skillful up to this level. There's a benchmark for the IT student. That's like. So there is a global benchmark. So Indian students have to reach that type of benchmark. So that is what we talk about international influences. The global trends, international agreements, and educational benchmarks affect the national policy. So accordingly, national policies have to be determined. What is the process of policy formulation? What, what is the process, process of policy how it is done? Policy formulation. Oh, Analysis of the existing situation. Analysis data of collection and assessment. Situation. Gathering data, data on current assessment. educational outcomes, challenges and resources. Then stakeholder and engagement. Then stakeholder involving educators, students, involving parents educators, and community students, leaders parents, in identifying problems, problems and needs. Problems then generation of policy then generation options, of policy brainstorming options, and research, exploring, and exploring and various exploring policy various alternatives policy based alternatives, on research, best, on best research, practices best and innovative approaches. That is how the generated is how policy the options generated are policy generated. Options are then consultation generated. and workshops, then consultation and engaging workshops. stakeholders in engaging discussions to generate diverse policy options. The national education policy 2020 came, that's what they did. They widely consulted, that's what, that's what they said. We don't know. We but don't uh, here and there, there were debates and all. So people were giving their opinions for and against. So that's called engaging stakeholders in discussions to generate diverse policy options. Then evaluation of policy options. Cost benefit analysis. How to evaluate the policy, whether the policy is correct or not. Cost benefit analysis. Assessing the financial feasibility and potential impact of each policy option. I mean, uh, whether, whether the money, money spent, spent on, on education, education is worth, is worth. Uh, whether, uh, it, has whether it has produced the necessary, the necessary effect, effect because of this, because of uh, this uh, expenditure. expenditure. That is called a cost-benefit cost analysis. Cost analysis. You know, uh, you know uh, uh, more profit, more you know, profit. less money, no, more less money. profit like. Cost benefit analysis, cost benefit risk assessment, analysis. identifying risk potential risks and challenges associated with challenges each associated option. With risk assessment was also option. done. Then making the policy done. decision final, then making prioritization the and selection, prioritization weighing the pros and cons of each option to select the most uh, viable, most uh, suitable uh, policy. Viable then approval and endorsement, securing approval from relevant authorities and stakeholders. I mean, after driving the policy or after uh, uh, you know uh, uh, having the drop on policy it has to be given to the relevant authorities and stakeholders for the approval then planning of policy implementation action plan development planning creating a detailed plan outlining steps timeline and responsibilities for implementation then resource mobilization ensuring necessary resources for policy implementation that is funds personnel materials uh, we need to see whether they are available 
pandemic for implemented resource mobilization then policy impact assessment monitoring and evaluation monitoring continuously monitoring the implementation process and evaluating outcomes against objectives then there should be feedback mechanism whether the policy uh, is the right one whether it is right uh, workable whether it is going on nicely the implementation is implementation is all right you need to have feedback mechanism establishing channels for feedback from stakeholders to inform adjustment and improvement if there is a necessity and improvement should be made then subsequent to policy cycles in the subsequent to policy cycles we have this review and revision that is periodic reviewing policies based on impact assessment and evolving needs so needs will be changing you know according to it it has to be revised that is the idea of the cycle policy cycle sustained improvement using lessons learned to inform new policy cycles and continuous improvement of the education system what are the educational implications improved educational outcomes effective policies lead to better educational outcomes including higher literacy rates improved academic performance and increased graduation rates improved educational outcomes then enhance the teacher quality policies focus on teacher training and development improve the quality of education delivered enhance the teacher quality then increase the access and equity policies that address barriers to edu- education ensure that all individuals regardless of background have access to quality education everybody is uh, reach up in other words everybody should will be able to get you know, that type of situation increase the access and equity samatva matra anugal then innovative uh, practices policy support for technology integration and innovative teaching methods enhances learning experiences then the responsive education system uh, yeah well formed the policy process ensures policy that the education, the education system remains responsive, system remains to, responsive, responsive to, changing changing to changing society needs, society needs and, global and, global trends. and global trends if, if, we, have if policy, we have a right policy, 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 policy then it should, 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 should you know that policy should, 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 should help in meeting the societal needs and global trends in future also that type of effective policy should be done that is called a responsive education system through policy these insights and points highlight the integral role of policies in shaping educational systems and their broad impact on national development and societal well-being so some of the questions will let us uh, you know uh, learn let us discuss which of the following best describes which of the following best describes the relationship between educational policies and educational outcomes educational policies have no significant impact on educational outcomes not at all true educational policies are essential for setting the framework within which educational outcomes are achieved educational, educational, outcomes, are achieved. educational, educational outcomes, outcomes are solely determined by the individual efforts of students educational policies are only important for administrative purposes and do not affect classroom practices which is the right one let us uh, uh, see the question again which of the following best describes the relationship between educational policies and educational outcomes so what is the answer educational policies are essential for setting the framework within which educational outcomes are achieved so the policy comes first you know because the nation comes first so national policy comes first then education needs to implement that policy for you know the more fruits to be achieved in life you know the outcomes education outcomes so the educational policies are essential for setting the framework within which educational outcomes are achieved educational educational policies provide the guidelines standards and goals for educational system they influence the curriculum design teaching Methods, teaching methods assessment, assessment practices, practices and resource and allocation all of which directly impact, impact educational, educational outcomes, outcomes. Uh, with regard uh, to the link between, between educational policy and national and development, national development what, what important what question we can ask, ask. How, how do educational, educational policies contribute to national, national development? development is it, is it by, by solely focusing on the cognitive development of students 
by ensuring equitable access to quality education which in turn fosters economic growth and social development by concentrating on extracurricular activities and sports or by reducing the number of schools to centralize resources what should be the correct answer how do educational policies contribute to national development please mark the question that will be easily we can find out there so by ensuring equitable access to quality education which in turn fosters economic growth and social development equitable access to quality education means all whether rich or poor all must be able to uh, get quality education no? that type of policy is uh, needed in india so that only fosters economic growth and social development so please understand this question and the answer any number of questions you can attempt through this So, so educational policies that promote equitable access to quality education help to build a skilled and knowledgeable workforce which is crucial for economic growth also education and education contributes to social cohesion and civic participation which are vital for national development okay with regard to the determinants of education policy what question you can ask which of the following is not a determinant of educational policy not the factor of educational policy in other words socio economic factors cultural values political ideology all of these are important with regard to educational policy but the meteorological conditions you know uh, you know uh, Uh, you know meteorological we know that no it is tarpa vappa nilai you know nothing connected with uh, the educational policy determined there is something else no is it so educational policy are influenced by socio economic factors cultural values and political ideologies which shape the needs and priorities of the education system meteorological conditions while they can affect the physical infrastructure are not a primary determinant of policy formation with the regard to process of policy formulation that is analysis of the existing situation what question you can ask what is the first step in the process of educational policy formulation what is the first step in the process of educational policy formulation is it the evaluation of policy options is making the policy decision analysis of the existing situation planning of policy implementation first and foremost we need to analyze the existing situation then only we can think of formulating the policies so analysis of the existing situation is the correct the first step in the process of educational policy formulation the first step in policy formulation is to analyze the existing situation to identify the current problems needs and gaps in the education system this analysis provides the foundation for generating and evaluating policy options then generation of policy options which activities involved in the generation of policy options which activities involved in the generation of policy in the kolge mudivil undakuvadhukku ethaiya seyalpadu seyalpadu idil tarapadirundu eedupadathapadirundu ethaiya seyalpadu thevai implementing the chosen policy conducting surveys to understand stakeholder needs deciding on the final policy monitoring the impact of the policy that is conducting surveys to understand stakeholders needs that's the first thing no? you know uh, the needs the need analysis should be done even before uh, policy formulation then only the policy formulation will be correct and real and it will be fruitful so the conducting surveys to understand stakeholder needs that is the answer here Uh, which activities involved in the generation of policy options that is conducting surveys to understand stakeholder needs generated policy options involves gathering input from various stakeholders through surveys focus groups and consultations this helps to develop a range of possible solutions to address the issues identified in the initial analysis then evaluation of policy options during the evaluation of policy options what criteria are commonly considered during the evaluation of policy options what criteria what are the conditions that we need a uh, popularity, popularity of the policy of among students feasibility, feasibility effectiveness, effectiveness and cost length, length of the policy of the document uh, historical uh, significance historical of the policy of course when we have the policy have it should the be policy, feasible, should be feasible. Whether, the whether the policy could be implemented policy, whether it is practicable in other words whether it should be fruitful effective whether the 
whether we are able to spend this so much uh, cost expenditure on that whether we are capable of doing that so feasibility effectiveness and cost they are very important with regard to policy formulation uh, you know during the evaluation of policy options these are the criteria that is feasibility effectiveness and cost other things are not important when evaluating policy options it is important to consider the feasibility practicality and ease of implementation effectiveness that is the ability to achieve desired outcomes and the cost financial financial or financial implications and sustainability the next question uh, with regard to making the policy decision what question you can ask who typically has the final authority to make educational policy decision in a country who has the authority who has the power to make educational policy decision students teachers educational policy makers and government officials parents no doubt in india we have educational policy makers and government officials of course uh, people could be consulted they can give the recommendation but the final decision has to be done by educational policy makers and government officials so the educational policy decisions are usually made by policy makers and government officials who have the authority and responsibility to establish and enforce policies at the national or regional level with regard to planning of policy implementation what what is the key question that you can ask what is a key component in the planning of policy implementation ignoring feedback from stakeholders developing a detailed action plan with the timelines and responsibilities immediately implementing without a plan focusing solely on the theoretical framework so what is the key component in the planning of policy implementation developing a detailed action plan with the timelines and responsibilities developing a detailed action plan with the timelines and responsibilities that is very important effective policy implementation requires detailed action plan that outlines the specific steps timelines that is time frame responsibilities and resources needed to put the policy into practice then finally policy impact assessment which is policy impact assessment important yeah not that policy ada kolge reethiyana kolgeyal yerpadukudi and vilaivu sambandhapatta madipidi yena avasiyam policy impact assessment it helps to determine if the policy is popular among politicians it provides feedback on the effectiveness of the policy and informs the future policy adjustments it delays the implementation process it is only necessary for financial policy policies so what is the question here why is policy impact assessment important it is because it provides a feedback on the effectiveness of the policy and informs a future policy adjustment if something is wrong then we can correct it that is the idea of this policy impact assessment so policy uh, impact assessment is crucial for understanding whether the policy is achieving its uh, Uh, predetermined goals intended goals and objectives it provides a valuable data that can be used to make necessary adjustments and improvements the final thing subsequent uh, subsequent policy cycle what is this is what is a subsequent policy cycle what is the meaning of this you are repeat of the exact same policy process without any changes your process of revising and updating policies based on feedback and new developments the final step in the policy formulation process an optional process that is rarely needed different words are given the right definition of this the b you know the b option your process of revising and updating policies based on feedback and new development that is policy cycle please understand this all these things are in the syllabus simply they can ask any question after this the major point if you understand that sir you will be able to answer such question i'm sure about it so uh, this policy cycle means what uh, you know it involves uh, it's a process of revising and updating policies based on feedback and new developments subsequent policy cycles involve revisiting and revising policies to address new challenges incorporate feedback from impact assessments and adapt to changing circumstances and needs this ensures that policies remain relevant and effective okay now we go for the uh, you know 
part C. So far we have seen part A and part B. Now we are going for the concept of economics of education. Kalbi parla da te, but ya kar te. Economics of education or financial aspects of education, in other words. Economics of education studies the allocation of resources in the education sector to maximize the societal welfare. It applies the economic principles to analyze educational issues such as resource allocation, efficiency, equity and the relationship between education and economic outcomes. So you have to understand the concept of economics of education. So, so, it studies the allocation of resources, resources in the, the education, education sector, first, first point. point. It applies it the economic, economic principles to analyze the educational, educational problems such as the resource allocation, allocation efficiency, efficiency, equity, and the relationship, relationship between education and economic output. output. That is the concept of economics of education. Please note down, all this is can be surely asked in the exam. What is cost-benefit analysis versus cost-effective analysis? The benefit and the you know cost cost benefit cost effect. What 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 is the difference actually? Cost benefit analysis weighs the cost and benefit of educational interventions to determine if they are economically justified. Educational activity intervention means educational activities. So the cost benefit analysis evaluates the cost and benefits of educational activities to decide if they are economically justified. Given the expenditure, whether we have got the force, that is called the cost-benefit analysis. The, whether the expenditure has been useless, it's a waste of money, or it has become fruitful. No? That is cost-benefit analysis. What is cost-effective analysis? It focuses on finding the most efficient way to achieve educational goals with the limited resources Comparing alternative interventions based on their cost and outcomes. Very important point here. Cost effective analysis, you know, uh, less effort, more uh, profit, no, more gain. Less expenditure, more gain. No? That is the idea here. Cost effective analysis. So, limited resources, but at the same time, you know, you should be able to achieve. Uh, very, very many educational education goals. So, so the, the most efficient way to achieve educational goals is with limited resources, resources comparing alternative interventions based on their cost and outcomes. Then the economic returns to higher education, another subtopic in the syllabus, economic returns to higher education. Higher education often leads to higher earnings and better job opportunities for individuals uh, contributing to economic growth and development. Of course, if you become a professor in the university or uh, aided college, you know, the government college, you will be getting quite a lot of money for your life cycle. You know, this is, you will, it's a higher earning and a, you know, better life, better job opportunity and more prosperity and more welfare. Uh, more more well-being, well in other words. So, so the higher, higher education, education often leads to higher earnings and better job opportunities for individuals, contributing to economic growth and development. It also enhances productivity, innovation and societal well-being, leading to positive uh, uh, external or positive effects or positive results, we can say. So economic returns to higher education. That there is a theory given in the syllabus, signaling theory versus human capital theory. What is the difference? Signaling theory suggests that education serves as a signal to employers about an individual's ability rather than solely enhancing skills or knowledge. So individual's ability is uh, taken, it's a signal, it becomes a signal rather than solely enhancing skills or knowledge. You know, the signaling theory suggests uh, only the individual's ability. It is not uh, for enhancing skills or knowledge. Signaling theory. Already you should be uh, a capable person. Yeah, that is what signaling theory suggests. Education serves as a signal to employers about an individual's ability rather than solely enhancing skills or knowledge. Human capital theory emphasizes that education increases an individual's productivity and earning potential by enhancing skills, knowledge and capabilities. So we have to enhance skills, knowledge and capabilities through some of that. So that way the individual uh, develops his personality. So that is what human capital theory talks about. 
education increases an individual productivity by being formed to become more skillful knowledgeable and capable the idea is different no the so single theory you know it simply talks about individual ability it is not forming the person simply it talks about individual ability for the job that is signaling theory human capital theory it forms the individuals and makes him highly productive human capital theory in a way gives formation to the students uh, by way of giving skills knowledge and capabilities and then it uh, makes him uh, productive for himself and the society that is human capital theory i hope you understood it signal theory doesn't uh, worry about the formation of the individuals it only talks about individual ability for the job signaling theory so that we have to understand the difference between signaling theory and human capital theory what is the concept of educational finance educational finance deals with the acquisition and management of funds to support educational institutions and programs so the concept of educational finance means we have to we need money you know to run the institution that is what is said here it encompasses various sources of funding including government allocations tuition fees grants donations and endowments all this now educational finance at the micro and macro levels what does this mean what is the understanding of this micro level educational finance focuses on financial management within individual educational institutions including budget resource allocation and cost control micro level educational finance financial management within individual uh, educational institution is separate individual institution there you know you talk about micro level educational finance a particular college it has got its own budget resource uh, uh, allocation uh, cost control uh, methods of monetary control everything these are all micro level educational finance aspects whereas macro level educational finance it examines broader uh, financial policies and systems governing education at the regional national or international level including funding mechanisms taxation and public expenditure so the macro level educational finance uh, exam examines broader financial policy that is for the country for the nation so that way you have to understand state level national level expenditure macro level educational finance Uh, so uh, here so we here talk, we about, talk uh, about funding mechanism taxation public expenditure etc what, what is the concept of budgeting what is the concept of budgeting budgeting involves planning and allocating financial resources to achieve educational objectives efficiently budgeting involves planning and allocating financial resources to achieve educational objectives efficiently it includes estimating income forecasting expenses i mean future expenses setting priorities which which comes first which comes second like the setting priorities and monitoring financial performance to ensure effective resource utilization this is called the concept of budgeting so the budgeting involves planning and allocating financial resources to achieve educational objectives efficiently what is the concept of economics of education now again we are coming with it uh, i think other yeah, I, i think we are i am repeating it and uh, somebody other it has come again uh, yeah i'm uh, very sorry that uh, somebody it has come so we are finishing and we are happy about it no it should not be there already we have finished it i think again i have put it here the economic returns we already uh, spoke about it now questions we we just uh, let us uh, analyze some of the questions how does politics influence the education system by directly hiring uh, teachers and staff through the formulation of educational policies and funding by managing classroom activities by setting student examination schedules so what is the correct answer how does politics influence the education system evar arasya kalvi amaipai paadikirathu selvam santhi through the formulation of educational policies and funding that's very important you know this is how it influences education through the 
formulation of education of policy is happening. Each government has its own policy. No? Congress government has a different policy. Now BJP government has a different policy altogether. If you just look at it, you will be uh, there are some positives and negatives. Something like through the formulation of educational policies and funding, uh, politics influences education. Politics shapes education by creating policies that determine the structure, content, and funding of the education system. This includes decisions about curriculum standards, teacher qualification, and resource allocation. Which aspect of education is most directly affected by political decisions? That is classroom seating arrangement, extracurricular activities, curriculum standards, student social clubs. Which aspect of education is most directly affected by political decisions, normally curriculum standards? You know, the present government said, you know, the previous the content which we had is not enough. They were, uh, to, uh, today's they were government is talking about interdisciplinary approach in education. Approach in education. You, study you study science at the science same time, you study arts, arts, arts also. Arts so there's a different, uh, different uh, uh, you know, uh, curriculum uh, design all to now, now through a new uh, education uh, policy, uh, policy. Uh, twenty twenty. So the curriculum so the standards only uh, uh, very much affected uh, by uh, any political uh, system. Uh, so curriculum standards are established through political processes involving involving policy makers and educational authorities. These standards are this dictate standards what students dictate need, what to, learn need to learn at different grade levels. That's what's happening. That's happening. Not That's today, no more one, one to five. five. No. One to five. Now primary sections now are primary having sections seven years. Having seven years. Uh, like that, no? It uh, goes, like that, no? you know, uh, so, uh, so plus one, plus two, normal plus one, plus two, plus two, everything is integrated now. Right? So, so that, that way. way. So, so curriculum standards are established, established through, through political processes involving policy makers and educational authorities. authorities. Next, Next question, what is the primary focus of the liberal perspective on liberation, uh, on education? Liberal perspective means a bunch of liberal, what is the primary focus of the liberal perspective on education? Maintaining traditional values and practices promoting equality and access to education for all, encouraging competition and individual achievement, reinforcing social hierarchies. Which is the right one? What is the primary focus of the liberal perspective on education? Because this is there in the syllabus. That is why this question is being asked. Liberal perspective on education. That is, promoting equality and access to education. That is liberal. That is uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it allows uh, uh, everyone it allows, to uh, uh, exceed education, uh, to have an access to, to have an uh, higher education. Uh, higher so it promotes so equality and promotes access, equality to education access to education for education That is a liberal that perspective, a liberal perspective, perspective of, education. of education. The liberal perspective emphasizes the importance of providing equal educational opportunities to all individuals, aiming to reduce social inequalities and promote social justice. The next, next question, question, how, how does, does the, the conservative perspective, perspective view the role of education? Conservative, conservative means the world, world, you know, yeah. very old, yeah. uh, yeah. No, unchangeable. Yeah. Uh, certain yeah. things we always yeah. keep it as sacred. Yeah. We don't, don't want to change, change according to the uh, needs of the time, time, modern time. time. So, so the conservative, the conservative perspective. perspective. So, so, how does the conservative perspective view the role of education as a means to promote critical thinking and social change as a tool for reinforcing established social and cultural norms? Vidhikalai, apadhiye kumbha sayyivar kaanu ur karibiyaya parkarvar kaanu the conservative perspective adha nair roo. That's, that's very important. As a platform for social experimentation, certainly not. As an instrument for global integration, certainly not. So what is the correct answer? It is uh, taken as a tool. This conservative perspective on education uh, takes education as a tool for reinforcing established social and cultural norms. Sellar it to the point of character, it will be the conservative perspective tends to emphasize the preservation of traditional values and practices, viewing education as a means to maintain social order and continuity. Next question, what is the critical perspective on the politics of education? Critical perspective, you know, of politics of education. 
it supports the status quo in education policies. It examines how education perpetuates social inequalities. It focuses on increasing standardized testing. It aims to depoliticize the education system. What is the correct answer? What is the critical perspective on the politics of education? It examines how education perpetuates social inequalities. And the awareness of the person who is in the education system is the same. The Samuha Yatra Talwal is the same. The Samuha Yatra Talwal is the same. The Samuha Yatra Talwal is the same. क्रिटिकल पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन द पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ एजुकेशन। आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस। सो द क्रिटिकल पर्सपेक्टिव एनालाइज़ेस हाउ एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशंस और पॉलिसीज़ कैन रीइंफोर्स सोशल स्टैटिफिकेशन और पावर बैलेंस। एडवोकेटिंग फॉर ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव चेंजेस टू प्रमोट हीपिटी और जस्टिस। there are some theories given, behavioralism, theory of systems analysis and theory of rational choice. I think it's easy to understand, nothing difficult. Of course, there are theories but then explanation is there, we can easily understand. So this is the last part, part D or part 4. What does behavioralism focus on in political science? This is institutional structures, individual actions and psychological factors, historical development, philosophical theories. So what does behavioralism focus on in political science? That is individual actions and psychological factors. Behavioralism emphasizes the study of individual behaviors, attitudes and psychological processes to understand political phenomena. I hope you understood. What is the primary concern of the theory of systems analysis in politics? The role of individual leaders, the interplay between various political institutions and processes, the influence of cultural traditions, the impact of international relations. What is the primary concern of the theory of systems analysis in politics? Theory of system analysis in politics. What is the primary concern? That is the interplay between Various political institutions and processes. A little difficult to understand because it is there in sociology, political science that is given here in education. But anyhow, we can understand that is the interaction between various political institutions and the processes it is having. So the system analysis examines how different components of the political system interact with each other, focusing on the relationships and feedback mechanisms within the system. So this is the right idea, the primary concern of the theory of system analysis politics that is nothing but uh, analysis of how different parts of the political system interact with each other focusing on the relationships and feedback mechanism within the system. Which of the following best describes the theory of rational choice in politics? Uh, that is also in the syllabus, no? Rational theory of rational choice. What does this mean? It emphasizes the unpredictability, uncertainty, unpredictability of human behavior. It assumes individuals make decisions based on the preferences and constraints. It focuses on the historical context of political decisions. It relies on emotional and cultural factors in decision making. This is the right word. Which of the following best describes the theory of rational choice in politics? The right answer is this. It assumes individuals make decisions based on their preferences and constraints. Very important. That is, what is the uh, theory? Theory of rational choice in politics. Here, the individuals are able to make decisions. I mean, they use their brains and make the right decisions. They have their own preferences and, and they see the concern. Accordingly, they make certain decisions. That is called the theory of rational choice in politics. So, rational choice theory says that individuals act in their own best interest, making decisions by weighing the cost and benefits of various options given uh, within given constraints. Uh, then, 
education for political development, political and social area. That is the last area in part I mean part D or in unit two. That is the last topic. Education for political development and political socialization. What is this? Political social. How does education contribute to political development? By solely focusing on vocational training. By, by fostering civic skills and knowledge about political systems, system, by avoiding any political content, by limiting by critical thinking and debate. Content, how does education contribute to political development? It is by fostering civic skills and knowledge about political systems. Education plays a crucial role in political development by teaching students about their rights and responsibilities, the functioning of political institutions, and encouraging active participation in the political process so that is in that way this uh, you know education so contributes to the political development it's a critical attitude it develops in the students what is the role of political and socialization in education what is the role of political what is the role of political socialization in education to indoctrinate students with a particular political ideology to expose students to multiple perspectives and encourage independent thought to eliminate political content from the curriculum, to prioritize economic skills over civic education, which is the right one. Again, the question, see the question. What is the role of political socialization in education? Political socialization. In education, political socialization. So, what is the answer? To expose students so what is to the multiple answer? perspectives to and encourage independent thought. I mean, they must be able to see different ideas, different you know the, the things from different angles, different ideas from different angles, and uh, thus they should have an independent thought. That is called political socialization. Very nice word, easy to understand, nothing special about it. Political socialization involves the process by individuals learn and develop their political beliefs and values, often through educational experiences that present diverse viewpoints and encourage critical thinking about political issues. I hope this is over. God bless you abundantly, dear friends. I think uh, this area seems to be a little, uh, not a hard, I would say, but uh, something, uh, you know, unusual. Uh, this topic, say, we never hear about it. It comes from political theory and uh, sociology, perhaps, advanced sociology, perhaps. But anyhow, uh, education is an interdisciplinary subject. We should be able to understand all these theories. You know? That is why they have given this for net exam. I hope you understood it. Of course, uh, we will be also pursuing little later in a, at a deeper manner, also later on. At the moment, uh, we will be preparing for the uh, TNC exam right now. So just go through this, this again and again. At least uh, the word and the meaning. You know? And uh, if you keep something in your mind, you know? If you fix the concept, the basic idea in your mind, you will be able to answer any number of questions here. Uh, dear friends, thank you very much for your, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind you know, presence kind present and, uh, and continue to continue support to me and support also, me and also uh, subscribe uh, so that subscribe I am able so to post, uh, 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 you know, uh, upload uh, so uh, many uh, other so videos, videos so that, uh, you, so know, that uh, you know, it becomes, it becomes valuable. valuable. No, valuable. That is the idea here, not anything else. Not anything Thank else. you very much. Thank you very God bless you abundantly.